Each day it seems like I hear something come from someone about the times that we're living in, the things that are going on in the world. The people are recognizing that we're living in times that are different from any other time. One of the things that happens is people are familiar enough with the Bible to know that it's different now than it was before, and that things in the Bible have foretold things that would happen. They've heard enough, whether it's from their church, from a pastor, from reading the Bible, from a study, from just being around people who know something about the Bible, even people who aren't church people, who haven't been churched, who aren't necessarily Christians. They hear things, and they see things, and they equate it with a Bible message. They equate it with end-time prophecy. And when it comes to end time prophecy, and when we talk about end time prophecy, we're talking about events that occur before what Christians know as the end of the world, as Jesus' return, this ushering in a new type of living, a new type of kingdom. And there are so many questions about these things and, and so many different teachings from different backgrounds. A lot of the things that are taught are theories. They're not facts. And what are we basing our beliefs on? And for centuries and centuries, people have believed that they were living in the time of the end. The apostles that walked with Christ, when, after they watched him ascend, they were looking for his return. They expected him to come. He wanted them to feel that way. And why is that? Why would Jesus leave? He says, I'm coming back. And he leaves and he wants them to have this a sense of urgency. He wants them to have this sense of, I'm returning. I'm coming back. I'm coming. Well, one of the reasons is because if I know that somebody's coming to visit my home, I want to make sure that it's in the best order I can have it in. If I think that, well, I've got a week before they come, I might drag my feet a little bit until the day before. But if the person says, you know, I'm going to show up I'll be there sometime this month. Well, that could be tomorrow. If, if, we're in the, if we were in the 1st of February, that could be that day or it could be 28 days from then. So when is that person coming? Are they coming now or later? So the purpose for Jesus doing that is to get our hearts ready, to prepare ourselves, to always have the house clean, to always have it ready for his return. And so these people that have always believed this thing, my, my grandparents believed that Jesus would come before they died. My parents believe that he will come before they die. They're still alive. I was talking with my mom yesterday, and she was saying, I really want to live to see Jesus coming in the clouds. And one of the things that I want to assure you of, and, and I'm saying this for a reason, if you are Christ and you have the faith of Jesus and faith in Jesus, and you simply accept him and you're living up to the light that you have, whether you die in this world or you live till the coming of Christ, you will see him coming in the clouds. If you're in that first resurrection, the, the dead in Christ rise first. So you'll be close to Christ before those who are living will be close to Christ in a physical sense. So have no fear. If you're in Christ, you're safe. But so many people are misled. And recently, people have been, in the last couple of years, it's been stirring the world. It seems like things are, people are starting to make a decision, either for or against. It's the, everything is, it's kind of like sifting. You know, you, when you sift, it refines the flour. And people are starting to refine their understanding and say, I want to know more. I, you know, I don't want to be left out if there's something serious coming. So lives are changing. People are making decisions. And in that process, Satan is going to work to deceive you as hard as you want to do what's right. He's going to try to deceive you to believe what's wrong. And there's something that came about recently. There was this, uh, um, I'll just show you uh, in just a moment. But there was this image put at the United Nations which is in New York City. That's where the world headquarters for the United Nations. There was a statue that was put there, and many ministries, news outlets, uh, you name it, people had a lot to say about it. 
In fact, here's, here's that picture. I'll just show it to you. This is what it looks like. This is an actual photograph. And, you, you know, when you take a look at that, when you take a look at that, that does look like something that maybe you've heard of from the Bible. It seems to represent an image that maybe we've read in the books of Daniel and Revelation. And along with this, I'll give you a little closer look. Take a little closer look at it there. And I zoomed in on it for a reason. And um, this image also was not only at the United Nations, but they put it at Rockefeller Center too. And in just a moment, I'll show you that. But what I did was I printed off this little paper here, uh, got it online. When this image first went up, I think it was in uh, December, early December, that this went up at the United Nations. I started getting emails and texts and phone calls and people saying, what is this? Is this, is this a beast of, of Revelation or the beast in Daniel? And once I got a look at it, I, in my mind, I made a decision. And, and we'll look at these texts that, that will show us what this beast is supposed to look like. So here's what the headline says. Sculpture which likened end times beast put in front of the United Nations. Imagine that. A news outlet putting that up. And then there was a religious outlet, uh, which is a Christian broadcasting outlet. And they said this. They said, a statue displayed at the United Nations in New York was likened to the end times beast from the New Testament book of Revelation. So people are paying attention to things a little more closely than they used to. Uh, the, I'm not going to read this article, but I'll just share a couple of little blurbs from it. Uh, it names the artist and the artwork, and it says, it represents a fantastic creature or animal that was donated by a government in southwestern Mexico. This one news outlet reached out to a uh, permanent mission of Mexico and the sculpture's artist for comment, but never heard back from them before they published this. So there were some questions as to what it was about. And it says, though some may consider the winged lion to be art, others were not fond of the figure, saying it looked eerily similar to the beast, it's got beast in quotes, described by the Apostle John in the Bible's book of Revelation and by the prophet Daniel in the Old Testament. So people get uneasy when they see these things. Wait a minute, that looks like the beast of Revelation and Daniel, people are saying. And they also put this thing in front of Rockefeller Center in New York City. Here's, here's another photograph of it on the PowerPoint. And if you, it's a little bit different. It's light. The light is better, so you can see more colors there. And, you know, something else I want you to notice in that photograph is this is right next to Rockefeller Center in Rockefeller Plaza. I've been there hundreds and hundreds of times. And look up over the, at the right corner of that photograph that was taken. And you'll see this image there that's on the Rockefeller Center building. This, this is filled with idolatry, this whole area where the statue is sitting. It's just, it's tremendous, the idolatry that's there. So I just wanted you to see that. Now, if you notice down too, at the bottom on that uh, stand that that lion is on, if you look down at the bottom, the very bottom, you'll see a little plaque there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Well, I. I couldn't get a picture of a plaque. I, I want to tell you, I was going to go to New York City and actually take a photograph. I was trying to get some friends of mine that lived there to do it, and their schedules wouldn't line up. Well, they removed this thing just recently. It's just been taken down in the past week. And how long ago did I say I wanted to go up there, Ed? It was about a week ago, right? About a week or two ago. And I just I didn't get a chance to get there. But the image has been removed from both the Rockefeller Center and the United Nations. It has been removed. But on that plaque, here's what it says. Now, before I show you this, somebody has highlighted. I didn't do it. It's just the only photograph I could get of that plaque. Somebody highlighted the words peace and security. So here's what it says. A guardian for the international peace and security sits on the visitor's plaza outside the United Nations headquarters. The Guardian is a fusion of Jaguar and Eagle and donated by the government of, I don't know how you say that, some place in Mexico. It is created by artists uh, Jacobo and Maria Angeles, I guess it is. And that's what it says on that plaque. 
And this was the only picture I could find. Now, I find it interesting that whoever had posted this, I think this was a Twitter post of this picture that I got off of the internet. And whoever posted this, you notice they highlighted peace and security. And there's a reason that they did that. They were obviously making a statement because you've got this beast that looks like an image. This is from this international guardian for peace and security, right? And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it speaks about when the nations are saying peace and safety, or some Bible translations say peace and security, then we'll know that the time is near, you see. So all of these things stir the mind and get people who look at the Bible to say, oh, this represents something. This is representative of something. So how can I know? When people start making comments of, look, that's the beast of Revelation, or look, that's the beast of Daniel, how can I know if that's a representation or not? I go to the Bible. That's where I go. I go to God's Word. So, in fact, um, let me see. I have this. This was the scripture reading for today. Take a look at this. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So it shouldn't be my interpretation. It needs to be the interpretation of the inspired Word of God. What does it say? What does the Word of God say? And these men that wrote these prophecies were, were moved by God's Spirit. So if they were moved by God's Spirit to write these things, I need to be moved by God's Spirit to understand these things and read them for what they say. Also, this light that shines in a dark place, the day that dawns and the morning star rising in my heart. Do I want Christ in me? That will help me to understand these things even more clear. So again, I want you to just take a look. Is this a representation of the end time beast of Daniel or Revelation? Let's begin by opening our Bibles to Daniel chapter 7. We're going to start in Daniel first because without Daniel, we can't possibly understand Revelation. Now this is not a sermon to talk about the meaning necessarily of these beasts and of these things that are mentioned here. This is just trying to identify so that we're not deceived when something like this comes up and somebody says, look at what this is doing. Look at what they're pointing to. This is helping us to not be deceived by these things. Remember, Jesus told his disciples, do not be deceived. He said that a number of times. So let's begin here in Daniel chapter 7. I'm just going to start in verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream, telling the main facts. Now, before we go on, I just want to say, we're going to read through this, and then we're going to come back and, and grab little pieces of it. Okay? So let's just read through several verses here. Verse 2, Daniel spoke, saying, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched till the wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man and, had a, man's, and a man's heart was given to it. And suddenly another beast, a second like a bear, was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth and they, th they said thus to it. Arise, devour much flesh. After this I looked, and there was another like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. And the beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots, and there in its horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth 
speaking pompous words. I'm going to stop there. This describes a number of things. So let's look at this a little more careful. Daniel chapter 7. I'm going to put it on the PowerPoint for you because I want to highlight a couple of things. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream telling the main facts. Daniel spoke, saying, I saw my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. Now, again, we're not going to discuss what these things mean. If we have studied these prophecies before, this is to identify some of the things that people are saying this beast in front of the United Nations represents. The next, next verse, verse 3 and 4, verses 3 and 4, it says, And the four great beasts came up from the sea, each one different from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand. So let me ask you, it says four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. Was that image one or four? It was only one. So we've eliminated this part, right? We've eliminated it. Now, I don't know why, but my um, last night, I, I, I put some references in here, and they're all gone. I don't know where they're gone, they went. So I have to wing it. I, I don't have any other things to jog my memory. I usually have a little outline note. But we'll just continue on. Next, verse 4, it says, The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Well, when I saw that beast, it, it kind of looked like a lion in the mouth. And it did have wings, but they weren't like eagle's wings, if you've ever looked at eagle's wings. Then it says, its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. Well, this image still had wings, and it's not standing on two feet. And a man's heart was given to it. And suddenly another beast, a second, like a bear, it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth, and they said thus to it, devour and rise much flesh. So it's not hunched up on one side. It doesn't have ribs in its mouth. So see what we're doing? Just by reading the text, we've eliminated that this is not this beast in Daniel so far. We keep going. Daniel chapter 7, verse 6, it says, After this I looked, and behold, there was another like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. And the beast also had four heads. This, this image that they had only had two wings and only one head. So, again, just knowing what to look for, just reading the text for what it says. Daniel 7, 7. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it. It had ten horns. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, the little one, coming up after them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots, and there in its horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. Now again, we know and understand if we've studied. If you're curious about any of these things, on the website there is a, there is a series where we talked about these things, and you can go there and find that. So when I look at this, this cannot possibly be the beast of Daniel. We've eliminated that just by looking at these texts. I don't see any of that when I look at this beast. But what about the beast of Revelation? There are people who are saying, well, no, it's similar to the one in Daniel, but it's more like the one in Revelation. So let's take a look at the book of Revelation. Now I've put this on the PowerPoint for you. Revelation 13.1. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having, what? Seven heads. Seven heads and ten horns. How many heads were on that beast there at the UN? It's only one. You see how misleading things can be? They, just, they take something, and they just run with it. 
This happens a lot, friends, and a lot of Christians have fallen for it. And just this fast, we're just looking at a few verses. We've eliminated, well, it's not the beasts in Daniel. And you notice there were four beasts in Daniel. It wasn't just one. And it says here, seven heads and ten horns. So when I look at this beast, I don't see seven heads, and I certainly don't see ten horns. I only see one head. Well, let's go on. Revelation 13, 1. It says seven heads and ten horns, and on its horns ten crowns, and on its heads a blasphemous name. So how many horns are on this image? None. Not one. So I go on. It says in verse 2, Now the beast which I saw, I'm sorry, yeah, the ten crowns. So if there are no horns, there's no crowns, right? And on his head's a blasphemous name. I wanted to pick up where the last highlighting was there. It says, Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him its power and its throne. So let me just highlight this. On his head, a blasphemous name. There's nothing on the head of that beast that I can see that has any kind of writing or anything like that. There's no name. When I look a little further, it says, the beast which I saw was like a leopard. Um, it doesn't look like a leopard to me. I don't see any of those characteristics. And then I continue on. It says, its feet were like the feet of a bear. Does this image have the feet of a bear? Let's look. If you look here, look at his feet. It doesn't look anything. It looks almost like a robot or like a, some kind of a fake animation. Bears have claws. They're known for their sharp claws. So we don't have the feet of a bear there. And then in Revelation 13, 1, it says, and his mouth, there in verse 2, the bottom part of the verse, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. Now I highlighted that in a different color. And the reason I did that is because it does seem to have the mouth of a lion. So there's just enough imagery in this image to make people think it's talking about the Bible, to make people think there's a reference to the Bible. And then the fact that on that plaque it had the words peace and security make people think that it could be talking about the Bible. You know, when I look at these things and I look at this image and I look in Revelation and Daniel, if I just do a little study back in Daniel chapter 7, just for a moment, let's turn back there, just for a minute. I'd just like to share a few think, thoughts with you, just to help you all to study a little more. It's really all about Bible study. And remember that this particular dream, in Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar was given the dream, and Daniel interpreted it for him. Well, here we see that this is during the first year of Belshazzar's reign as king of Babylon, and Daniel has this dream. That's what it says. Daniel had a dream of visions on his head while upon his bed, and he wrote down the dream telling the main facts. And then in verse 2, Daniel spoke saying, I saw in my vision by night, this is Daniel 7, 2, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. Remember, we've talked about winds mean strife. Sea can be many people. Verse 3, the four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. And then if you look through there, I won't read through it, but you see in verse 4, you see a lion. You see in verse 5, a bear. You see in verse 6, a leopard. And you see in verse 7, this nondescript beast. And each one of these go right along with Daniel chapter 2 about these prophecies that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream about this end time. So Satan wants to cause confusion. When we look at history and we look at these things and we recognize that you, you have these beasts, the lion represents Babylon, the bear represents Medo-Persia, the leopard represents Greece, this nondescript beast represents Rome. It's interesting to me that in the Christian community, while there might be some confusion as to how certain things took place, they don't seem to question those kingdoms and that each one of these creatures are representative of those very things. That's one thing that much of Christianity, and I can't say that all Christians believe that, but the majority of denominations will accept that that's what these beasts represent. 
And then when we get to Revelation, when we looked at that beast, if you turn there with me one more time, Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Let's go back there. You notice it says in verse 1, And I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and, and on its horns ten crowns, and on its heads a blasphemous name. And then verse 2. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and its mouth was like the mouth of a lion, and a dragon gave him his power and his throne as his great authority. Now we've talked about this before, but just to put things in perspective, Daniel, when he, when he was dreaming, he saw the, the uh, lion, the bear, the leopard, and then this nondescript beast. And here John describes this nondescript beast, and then the leopard, the bear, and the lion. There's a reason for that. See, again, I hear Christians sometimes, and I've, I've had this conversation recently. Well, this is ridiculous because it's backward. Why is it backward? Well, there's a reason that it's backward because Daniel was looking from his time and perspective in life. He was living in Babylon, and that was in about the year 600 or so BCE. And then here, John is in the first century, and he's looking back in time. There had already Babylon had already been taken, and Medes and Persians had already taken Babylon, and then Greece had already. All of these things had happened, and now Rome is the dominant. They're the dominant power at this time. So that's why in Daniel you see it in one direction, and in Revelation you see it in the other. And it's amazing that you see here the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And we know in the Bible that the dragon is actually the serpent. Ultimately, the devil is the one that gives the authority to this nondescript beast, and it comes through another power, and we've talked about that. So, you know, I, I can't state this enough. I think it's vitally important that we, we study our Bibles, that we, we know what it says. And when somebody pops up with an image like this and they, they show you this picture and they say, oh, look at this, this looks just like something that came out of Daniel and Revelation. Well, you know, there are similarities there. But remember, Satan is subtle in what he does. He used the serpent in the garden because it was the most subtle of all the animals. Some translation call it subtle. You don't deceive by just blatantly coming out and going against everything else. You have to make it look a little like the original. A counterfeit dollar bill doesn't look like Monopoly money, not for the United States anyway. I couldn't take a $1 bill out of a Monopoly set and pass it off as a counterfeit American $1 bill. It, People would laugh. The counterfeit has to look similar to the real. And so what, is, what has happened here? They've placed this thing in front of the place called the United Nations that is designed, they've, they've been put in place by governments to bring all of these nations together. And because that's where this image went, minds automatically go there. It's the untrained mind. It's the mind that hasn't studied the things that are in the Bible. They're the ones that grab onto these things and latch on and run with it. And then when you get a phrase where it said there, peace and safety, or peace and security, and I believe, if I can just remember where that was, Zach, can you, can you back me up uh, to that slide? Um, you don't have to click it. Well, you might have to click it. Um, keep going, keep going. Um, all the way back. It's, boy, I, I had more slides than I thought. I didn't realize I had that many slides. Um, yes, that one. The, the one uh, the, that one, I think it's the black one. The one that has, that's the one. I'm sorry for the interruption. Yes, there you go. First Thessalonians 5. You can bring us back to where we were. Thank you. I just, I couldn't remember where that was. First Thessalonians 5, if you turn your Bibles there. I'm sorry for the interruption, but I did have that one little text there. 1 Thessalonians 5, notice what it says. <clears throat> but concerning, this is verse 1, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. 
For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the others do, but let us watch and be sober. This is very important. But you see there, this is the text, verse 3, where it says when they say peace and safety. And because that was on the plaque, somebody took that and ran with it. And they start propagating these things and putting it on social media and other people get a hold of it and they come out, oh wow, peace and safety, look at that image, it looks like a lion, it, it looks like the beasts in Revelation and Daniel. And then once we compare it, we say, oh, it's nothing like those beasts. The only thing that I saw was the mouth of a lion and it had two wings. That's it. That's all I saw. And on that plaque it said peace and safety, or peace and security rather. So be careful what we fall for. You have to know what the Bible says. We have to study. Remember at the beginning, at the outset, I talked about if you know that a visitor is coming to visit, you're going to have your things in order. Look at what it says again in verse 2. It says, For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. It's at a time when we don't expect. So we should constantly be looking for him. Constantly, constantly be looking to him. Constantly be studying about him. Because the thief in the night might be the last breath you take. That could be the thief in the night. You just die. And you have to have a walk with Christ if you're going to be in the first resurrection. I know, I, I, it's like I pound a drum. It's like I say this over and over. Why do I do it? You know, when we read the Bible... God is saying the same things over and over and over and over and over. Hundreds of times, literally hundreds, God is begging people, just, just listen. Just listen to what I'm saying. Cut out the noise. When the nations are saying things, make sure this is where the truth is. It's not in a man. It's not in a church. It's not in a denomination. If we have God's word, this will lead us to the truth. And if we have Jesus Christ, we have the truth. Try not to get caught up in the media hype. It's so easy. It's so easy to do. And, you know, this is another thing that happens. People get caught up in what's taking place in the world. Oh, is this the mark of the beast? If I get this medication, this, this jab, am I accepting the mark of the beast? I get that all the time. Well, what do you think? What do you think? Is that the mark of the beast? I'll tell you what, we'll save that for another lecture. The point is, friends, when you see these things happening, when you see these things happening, just recognize that Satan is going to try to deceive you. When I see the things happening in the world, it makes me know that Christ is ever closer, just another step closer. Is he going to come in my lifetime? I don't know. I have no idea. I can't say yes, no. I can say, I hope so. I hope he comes in my lifetime. And, you know, the old saying, be careful what you wish for. Let me tell you, things are going to get worse. Things are going to get worse. Also, this text about peace and safety. I don't know if you know, but 19, I think it was 1986. It was 1986 was an international year of peace and safety. I don't know if you knew that or not. The reason I re realize that and know that is because uh, the denomination that I come from, the, they put a lot of stock in this verse, peace and safety or peace and security. I mean, they, they tout this all of the time. So when 1986 was here, I remember what my thoughts were because I had been raised a certain way. Well, here we are in 2022. This says, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains. Well, remember, labor pains, they come quick. But usually there's a warning. 
There's always a warning before the birth, typically. You have pain before the baby comes, right? So the labor pains that we experience may be the tribulation when it begins and the things that we go through. And again, I want to say, don't be afraid of the tribulation. If you have a relationship and a walk with the Lord, you shouldn't be afraid of what's ahead. We should lift up our heads and be ready for what's ahead. And we should welcome what's ahead. But we should also have that sense of urgency to say, you know what, I want my neighbor to know what's coming. I don't want them to be caught unaware. And if they're caught unaware because I was lack or lax and I didn't do what I was supposed to do, then potentially their life could be on my hands, and I don't want that. So take these things seriously. Take your walk seriously. It's no time to be goofing off. It's no time to be saying, well, I'm going to wait to get my house ready. They're not coming till Friday, so, and it'll probably be, be about noon, so Friday morning at 8 o'clock, I'm going to get up and start getting my house ready. Get your house ready now. Because their flight might arrive early. And they might come walking up the sidewalk when you don't expect it. So be ready. Get ready. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in the media hype. Study the Bible and study to show thyself approved. This is the only way that you cannot be deceived. You have to keep studying and keep comparing everything that you hear with what the truth is. If Eve would have just stopped for a moment when that serpent offered her the fruit, if she would have just stopped and said, this isn't right. God said not to do this. And a talking serpent? Serpents don't talk. Stop and think, friends. Stop and think. Think about what the Bible says. And always, when somebody comes to you with something and they pass it off as this is something that's in the Bible, don't just accept it because it sounds convincing. Go to the Bible and check it for yourself. Again, study to show thyself approved. And if we do that, and we keep studying, we keep praying, and we ask for God's Spirit and His direction in our lives, we will be safe, and we will have nothing to fear, and we won't be deceived.